They say that is not hyperbole. And we're underway. Colorado State coming off a 21-point loss at UNLV over the weekend, snapped a five-game winning streak. Did not play well in that ball game, to say the least. Wyoming gutted one out over Air Force, 75-67. Roddy, the fadeaway, tough jumper to open. Jason, what Roddy's going to do, he's going to try to pull EK away from the paint to get him an outside jump shot. He's a very good mid-range and three-point shooter. It'll be harder the arrow to defend for EK outside. The double on Maldonado. They got him to throw it away, but it was last touched by Colorado State. And we talked to Nico Medved about the plan against Hunter Maldonado, one of the favorites for conference player of the year. Do you double him? Do you not? And he said they're going to do a bunch of different things, but you know they're doing this early. Yeah, and, and Roddy is one of those guys that can create his own shot. Maldonado is going to help EK get the ball down low. Wenzel was fouled by John Tanjay. That is his first. The last time Tanjay did not start was the Wyoming game on January 31st. Again, the Cowboys won in overtime, 84-78. Jason, he came off the bench in that game. He had 13 points. Really gave them a spark in that first half. DK had it poked away, gets it back. 21 points a game, the second leading scorer in the conference. Good kick out, an open look at three. And Roddy, who did not play well against UNLV, maybe his worst game of the season, has a look in his eye. Right into the front court, no. Look who's there for the offensive board. It's Roddy. Well, Roddy missed a free throw in the last game and came back the next week and hit a jump shot against San Diego State to win the game, but he had a look in his eye today and shoot around. He's ready to go. He wants revenge. There's no question. They feed it down low to EK. Showed patience. Deshaun Thomas got the block. It's an early energy boost. Roddy. Whew. You got the feeling this roof would have exploded early. And he had EK out top of the key. That's what you want. Your number one rebounder away from the basket. Wenzel lost it off his head back to Jeffries. They need Drake Jeffries to get going. He's been in a little bit of a slump the last six. Maldonado off. No. Roddy pulls down yet another rebound. Inside two and a half gone by here in the opening half. David Roddy four, everybody else zero. Thomas, the size advantage over Jeremiah Odin. Bowls him over in an offensive foul. Today at shoot around, Nico Medved said, you have to be cognizant of guys taking that offensive foul. As soon as you hit contact, they're going to go down, and that's exactly what happened. Hunter Maldonado, nearly 20 a game, found Jeffries on a curl. EK pulled that down. He's taken to the floor, and it will stay with Wyoming. No foul called on that play. Does that tell you something? Yeah. This is a rivalry game, and I'm going to tell you, the officials know about this. You remember the game? Xavier, you see a couple, time, couple uh, years ago, as you see, it looked like a foul there. You have to make sure you let the kids play, but you got to make sure that it doesn't get out of control. Wyoming has started 0-4 here in the ballgame. EK averaging 26 and a half his last four games, and he threw that into the fourth row. Colorado State's defense looks outstanding here in the first three minutes. So what they're doing is they have a goalkeeper, and that is Roddy on that last play. He was right in the restricted area in the paint. You see him in the background right there. Comes over to help out. Bad pass by EK. Trying to find Roddy back door instead. It's Stevens one-on-one -on -one with Maldonado inside the arc. And they've missed their last three shots. Right now, Maldonado has to take this ball right to the basket. He's got to see if he can get a bucket or a foul. He is 6'7". He's backing down the six-footer, Kendall Moore, and around it goes. Wenzel on the drive. Back out to Maldonado. Odin the offensive board, and Maldonado one more time. 
Wyoming, a very efficient offense. This has been a great basketball squad at 22-4 this year. Down to seven on the shot clock. Wyoming still yet to score. Back to EK. And finally, after three minutes and 48 seconds, the Cowboys on the board. And that was just too easy. EK was able to get the ball down low, and then he went to a strong hand, laid it in with the left. It's a whistle. It's called on the floor. It is odd. Brandon Wenzel, that is his first, which will send us John San Diego State. They blew a huge lead. They win it at the buzzer. They rush the floor. It was negative temperatures today, and there were students camped out like it was Krzyzewskiville. And it was unbelievable. It was cold. I mean, it was a 100-degree difference from where I came from, and I, it hit me right in the face, but these, these people in here are packed and it's hard to get a ticket, and they're loud. Steven stepped around the screen and out of the timeout. Colorado State snaps a drought. Now, they stopped that because there was a T-shirt that was thrown onto the floor. And I appreciate the announcement in the arena, Steve Wolf, that says, don't throw anything on the floor. We will find you and get you. <laughs> Kendall Moore is picking up Maldonado full court, trying to take his legs away. Slowing them getting into the offensive set. They're going to throw somebody at Maldonado all the time. They're going to double him. And he found Wenzel, and that was well off the glass. Maldonado at 35, a career high in the first meeting. Tanze takes it at Maldonado, and that is a foul. So the possible player of the year in the conference has his first four and a half minutes into the opening half. Tanji in the first game did the same thing. Maldonado. Shifts over, gets tries to get sideways with him, but Tanjay alleviates that by going wide, passing that ball. So it was definitely a foul on Maldonado. From deep. Roddy's got seven. Remember, he had just 11 in the loss at UNLV. He took a lot of pressure on himself, but a different focus. EK rolled it out. Wyoming just one of eight to start this ball game. Thomas, good three-point shooter. You know, you talk about the last game for Roddy. He only had 11 points, but he only had two rebounds. To me, that says that's your legs. I think he was a little bit tired. They played so many games in a row, but you know. He doesn't look like he's having any issues right now with his legs. Yeah, they were playing five games in 12 days, and he picks off a pass into the front court, drives the floor, and he's fouled. He looked like a runaway freight train trying to stuff that home. He'll go to the line for two. Horowitz, I would have loved to see you take a charge on this. You see the help out behind. Moore's looking over. Roddy comes over, and his interception takes it strong to the basket. And he is really firing up this team. Well, you saw it a couple of weeks ago in the San Diego State game. You saw it when they went to Nevada when he had 29 points on 11 of 14 shooters. There's an intensity. And we talked to David Roddy today at practice, Steve Wolf, about what it has been like here in Fort Collins. When they got here, when this team got here, these young players two and three years ago, there weren't 8,500 people packed in here. There weren't 60 media credentials. There weren't whiteouts. And he said when he walked into this building in his first game as a freshman against Denver, and there were 1,500 people scattered around, he and Nico Medved, they knew what they wanted to build, but they didn't know they'd get there. This is the fourth consecutive sellout of this building. He said, I had the biggest smile on my face when I saw those students running in here to try to get the best seat in the student section. Roddy's got nine of the 11 for Colorado State. And he can, whoa, what a catch by Maldonado. Ducell out to Maldonado, the extra pass. It's a wide open, Jeffries for three. That's what Maldonado does so well. Yes, he's the top, one of the, the second leading scorer on his team. He makes the extra pass, gets the shooter Jeffries involved, and Jeffries knocks it down. Jeffries is a really good three point shooter. Over 40% from the three-point line. Stevens again. Same spot as his last jumper. Stevens has four. So the two stars for the Rams have all 13 of their points. Well, Nico Medved said, we need guys to make shots. 
we got to have guys making shots, and so far, they are making them. Double on EK, the lefty over his shoulder. Roddy already has five rebounds in the first seven minutes. Long three, that's good! David Roddy owns the night! Unstoppable here in the first seven minutes with 12 in the early going. Their offense has been just fantastic, and Roddy is a reason for that, knocking down that long three. But I'll tell you what, Jay, their defense has led to good offense. Wyoming is struggling to get open shots as you see the bench going crazy. You know, we come into this game and you know that both these teams have player of the year candidates. Wyoming with two of them when you consider Hunter Maldonado and Graham Ike. And yes, they won the first matchup, but as you get to the end of February and it's tournament time and it's the March to March, who plays well down the stretch might since that up. And I'd say David Roddy's playing really well. He is, and, and you know what? I think you look back at those days of the 1,500 uh, students at the game, and now he's got something to prove. And he likes being on the stage. You check out those numbers, six and nine. The double on Ike, they almost got it away. Ducell has it as Wyoming really struggling on the offensive end. Two of 10, couple of turnovers, and it's deep in the shot clock again. Ducell found an open look. And he just has not been able to get going here. After hurting his hamstring, missing a few games, he's really been struggling. Stevens rocks into a three. Well, they're going to have to figure out how to get rid of that ball quick on the low block. Ike's holding it too long and making a hard pass cross court when they double him. They're going to double both Maldonado and Ike. they got to get rid of the ball quick when the, before the double team comes. Jeffries the extra pass. It's an open Odin for three. And those are the shots. They, you know what you expect from Maldonado and Ike. It's the ancillary parts. They've got to start hitting some shots if Wyoming's going to go where they want. Moores backed into EK. No basket. It's on the floor. And it is called on EK. That is his first. And that'll take us to another media timeout. 16-5. An early onslaught by the Ram, first time since 2015. So some long droughts for those two teams, and they would not have made it in 2015 had it not been for winning the Mountain West Conference Tournament in Las Vegas. Trying to, again, get there without any worries about that. Stevens out of the out-of-bounds play. No offensive board. We're going back to that 2013 team, Nico Medved was here as an assistant coach, and he saw what could be. So he's been to the back-to-back -back NCAA uh, tournament. And they also were in the 0-16 season in the Mountain West. So this guy knows what he wants, and he thinks he can make this a powerhouse. And a foul away from the ball. It was on James Moores. The 6'10 sophomore from New Zealand. Trying to stop EK through the screen, just kind of holding on. But that's five fouls you can get. You got Moores coming in. You know, well, there you go. Here's your guy, Xavier Ducell, with a nice jump shot. They need those other guys, rotational players, getting shots to go down. Tanjay, the strong drive. Hit from behind, no foul called. And Wyoming's lucky, that would have been number two on EK. Stripped away. Stevens into the open court, and he's fouled. And if that is on Hunter Maldonado, and he just picked up his second. Jeff Linder is, is, is really upset with Maldonado. It's not a smart play. Give him the two points. They need him on the floor, and now he's going to sit down. And you can see as he grabbed Steven's arm, he just, and he's a smart player. Just not a real smart decision on that play. Four. 4-0 student in finance. Well, and now you got to replace a guy who plays 38 a minute a game. Chandler Jacobs off the bench. Rolls in a triple. He struggled in the first game. Really couldn't get anything going. Which Medvedev said, we need him to knock down some shots tonight. 
His first one goes. This is going to be interesting here for Wyoming, playing without Maldonado, and for how long? It's Reynolds on the floor. It's Ducell with back-to-back -back buckets, and they are going to need all of that tonight for the folks who drove the hour and 15 minutes from Laramie. There were no dribbles in that possession. Ball moved from one area to the other quick and beat that double team. And Stevens is fouled. That's on Reynolds, the replacement for Maldonado. You see the good quick ball movement. Jeffries is a good three-point shooter, so you have to respect it. Ducell gets open. They knock down the three ball. Well, and something else to keep an eye on, too. Colorado State is going to shoot free throws the rest of the first half. And they are a 78% free throw shooting team. Jacobs thought about it. Now pulls. Good box out by EK. It's great about him. He can bring the ball up court. It's very versatile. And if you haven't watched Wyoming play a lot this year, you, you notice the back to the basket that they do more really than anybody in the country. Reynolds on the strong take. No, oh, Reynolds, the freshman from Peoria, averages just three a game in about 10 minutes off the bench, but they might need him a lot more tonight. And I like that. He was going to the basket. They need to get in that paint on the drives. A little rebound for EK. That's his third. Double-double machine who has 11 of those on the season. As you mentioned, he can run the point here at 6'10". Reynolds gets into the paint. Met by Moores. Now the shot clock reset. I don't know that it was supposed to. That ball never hit the rim. It reset to 20. What? Uh, and that's exactly what Nico Medved on the far sideline screaming over there. He is going crazy. Doesn't matter. They got to stop. Jacobs around corner. Late for three. You know what's impressive too about Graham EK? Numbers are one thing. You stand next to him, talk to him. His hand size is enormous. It, it's unbelievable. You shook his hand. I felt like he was touching my my elbow. <laughs> and you're not a small man. Well, you Me, know, a different story. But he is. He grabs that rebound and, and he can bring it up. But right now. Since Roddy was on the bench, they have struggled, Colorado State, to score. Ducell, half and a half. Xavier Ducell, eight points here in the opening half. And Wyoming has cut this 11-point deficit down to four. And what that does is it opens up the inside for EK and for the big guys to be able to get those shots because they have to now extend on him and not allow him to get that three. Xavier Ducell in the games in the 2022 calendar year has only made six threes. Already two tonight. Well, Colorado State has been stuck on 19 for four possessions. Roddy's over at the scores table right now. They need him to get back in because that's where their offense was coming from early on in the game. Yeah, just one of their last eight from the floor. Ducell feeling it. Offensive rebound. And all of this with Hunter Maldonado on the bench with two early fouls here in the first half. And Wyoming's been fine without him. EK takes the double team, left it short. That was really good defense by Moores. Just bodying him up, not fouling him. One of their last nine. This has been a long stretch without a whistle, Steve. And we're looking right across at Roddy, and he's just like, get me in here, get a foul. Somebody do something to stop the clock. Well, they're set for a line change. Yeah. On the drive, the kick out, it is Odin for three. Well, if you take Xavier Ducell off this offense here in the first half, the rest of the Cowboys are three for 16, and Nico Medved's gonna take a timeout because he knows he needs his star back on the floor. Well, we gotta get Maldonado right there, waiting to get in the game. Well, and if I would have told you that Hunter Maldonado would go to the bench, down by double figures with his second foul and you get back into the game, you take that because you're buying all the time you can. Jason Orwood, Steve Wolf, happy to have you with us here in Fort Collins. One of the most important games in this rivalry in decades, they're calling it. Xavier Ducell has given them a strong eight off the bench. Jake Jeffries still can't buy a bucket. Well, yeah, it's one of the most 
anticipated games, but there's been a lot of them this year in the Mountain West. This conference has been phenomenal. San Diego State Boise State game last night was unbelievable. Well, in the depth too, right? San Diego State has owned this conference for a long time. They've won the regular season title the last two years. Made the tournament five on the shot clock. Jacob saw it, stepped back, and drilled it. Foot was on the line. That's a big bucket to snap a long drought. And it was smart. Yes, we are trained to look at the shot clock. He went over, saw the shot clock was winding down, dropped it, and went through with about one second on the shot clock. Really smart play. Dussel turns and fires. Well, right. if you looked at the top of your screen and you saw Ali Farouk Manesh, the assistant with a big whiteboard, the word written on there was Raptor. Sounds ferocious and aggressive for an offensive play. <laughs> Absolutely, I'm, and I'm telling you, it's got something to do with number 21. Um, usually Raptors come in packs. <laughs> He's an individual, he wants it back. This time it's three on the shot clock. Jacob steps back, this time it's a three! And another rebound for EK. He's on pace for 23 rebounds. <laughs> he might get them all. The way the way the Colorado State is shooting the last five minutes, there's going to be a lot more rebounds to get. Jeff Jeffries again. He can get them up in bunches. You know, that's a that's a hard shot. He's coming from the left, the right side of the court, going left and shooting it right hand. I asked him today in the shoot around. We were talking. I said, I saw you do that. What's the deal when he goes, I shoot 90% of my shots, I shoot the ones at the right. But sometimes if I feel an opening, I can do that. But it's not the easiest shot for me. Looked pretty easy on that one. He's only taken 13 twos all year. That's not a good look. So Colorado State jumped Wyoming early. They were up by 12. But the Cowboys with the ball, nearly four minutes to go in the half. Maldonado on the bench and a chance to tie it with a three. The double comes on EK. Into the corner. Tough three. Tie ball game. Xavier Dussel with double figures here in the opening half. Give credit to EK. He is just like shooting apples in a barrel. I mean, he is throwing the ball from one side of the court to the other. And he's now he's calmed down with good passes. Beautiful pass to Dussel. Colorado State's got to get Roddy going. He had 12 in the first seven minutes. More, and it's sent out of there. And it's saved. Now, that hit the bottom of the basket. And it will be Colorado State ball out of the timeout. Well, you knew it was eight minutes in a tie game with 323. If you're Jeff Linder, it looks like he's going to sit the rest of the half. I think as long as you're in the game, that's smart. And it also gives the confidence to Dussel and some of the other guys that are out there picking up those minutes. They work it inside to Roddy, working on EK, who is playing with a foul. Dussel thought he got the ball. Instead, he picks up the foul. And that will send David Roddy to the line for a one-and-one, and, one, and it's the second on Xavier Dussel. Both of the teams are doing the same thing defensively. They're trying to double, and you see the double team coming on Roddy. That time, a little bit too aggressive was Dussel and grabbed the arm. 70% free throw shooter. Earns the bonus. How impressive it was, was it today to talk to him? Maldonado said to us, he said, I'd like to be seven and two. You know, seven assists to two, two turnovers. And the reason why he's out of the game was one of the turnovers. Yeah. So, you know, he, he's a smart player and a leader on this team. Realize he didn't play point guard until this year. We'll get into that later. But. Well, they had Marcus Williams transfer to Texas A&M. And a lot of people thought Wyoming could not be nearly as good, but they have been so much better this year. This unit super close, and the changing and having Maldonado is certainly a big reason why. Stripped away, another turnover. Well, you would think you're losing the Mountain West Rookie of the Year, and he averaging 16, 17 points, and you just pick it up, and that's a testament to the coaching staff. Reynolds got the screen. And Wyoming has its first lead of the ball game. And that's unbelievable, considering the way they started. They were down 16 to five, really struggling to find any offense at all. And then you have your one of your best players on the bench with two fouls. Well, and it was those turnovers that 
Nico Medved talked about us that lead to scores on the other end that turn out to be game killers. And Tanjay draws the foul. This is just a one and done penalty. Finds out that the defender was going behind the screen. He was able to drop the dime. Well, and Ducell just picked up his third foul. So the guy who got this Wyoming offense going after they struggled for a better part of the first 10 minutes, now on the floor, and it looks like he's staying on the floor with three fouls. Yeah, he's, he's got to be, got to be taking there he goes. Yeah, he's gone. He goes to the bench. You know, they got to get going. Odom's got to get going. He's a good shooter. He had a couple big shots in their first game. Well, one thing Wyoming's been able to do, take out this crowd. This was electric early, jam-packed to the rafters. There's not a single available ticket. And this crowd was electric in the first 10 minutes when Colorado State built a 19-7 to lead. Pretty quiet here the last seven, eight minutes. It was a hot, it's the hottest ticket in town, I'll tell you that. Jeffries for the lead again. Well, all of a sudden, Wyoming can't miss from beyond the arc. That's the easiest shot to shoot. It's a straight, direct shot from the top of the key. Jeffries was pure on that one. Now, you come in talking about the highest scoring duo in college basketball, EK and Maldonado. They've combined for two. <laughs> but Jeffries and Ducell of 20. Tanjay can't answer. 120 to go here in the first half. Wyoming has a two-point lead. Colorado State is right now hunting their shots. They got to get Roddy back in the game somehow. Who would have thought Mal Maldonado would have as many fouls as E.K. and Maldonado have points together? Rivera left is the trailer. <laughs> Isaiah Rivera only had eight combined points the last six games. And we talked about it. Who's going to be the secondary player that makes the difference? And we've gotten a lot of those here in the first half. Now the crowd back into it. EK trying to back down Roddy. Tough shot. Cannot save it inbounds. It will be Wyoming basketball with three on the shot clock. Well, that time, EK was a little bit confused. They didn't throw a double team at him. So it was one-on-one, -on -one, Roddy. And EK, and Roddy just went up with him. Now, Roddy is not as tall. He's like 6'4". But he went up there and blocked EK's shot. They reset the shot clock because of the out-of-bounds play. 10 on it now. Eight-second differential. Offensive foul. That is the second on EK. So two on EK, two on Maldonado, and three on Xavier Ducell here in the first half for a team that is not very deep. And great defense by Roddy, taking a page out of the Cowboys book and taking an offensive foul. There's only 11 seconds left in the half, and there was only two seconds on that shot clock. Colorado native. We grew up in Aurora about an hour and 20 minutes from here south. Final 10 seconds. Colorado State up one. Roddy left alone to end the half. Well, Roddy. But Ducell, on the other hand, this is his first game in double figures in Mountain West play. And they're getting bench points, which is really, really important for Wyoming. They have 16 bench points. It's 17 at Nevada. But they haven't really done much coming off the bench. Well, EK got the deflection for what is his seventh rebound, but he is now one of eight from the floor. Trying to change that. 
And two cracks at it, and he finally gets his second bucket of the night. Well, guy who's shooting at 60% over the last four games, you cannot give him two cracks at that basket. Stevens on the drive. He only had four in the opening half. It really was David Roddy and a few other buckets, and Thomas shuffled the feet. Turnovers were not a problem either way for these two teams who don't turn it over a ton. That's just the fourth turnover on Colorado State. You'll see Thomas playing good defense the first time, but you can't give number 33 two shots, point blank range at the basket. It's interesting to see how Maldonado set up most of that first half. See how he feels getting back into it. See if he has any rust. He only played a little more than eight minutes. And his game, Jay, is that he wants to go inside, and when you have two fouls, I think you get a little nervous about backing in, because somebody's going to take that charge. Very physical guard. E.K. knocked it out of bounds. Colorado State ball. And Roddy is clutching his left shoulder. He's holding on to it. He was bent over for a second. You can see a little bit of a grimace on his face. Yeah, you saw Thomas. Hit him with an elbow, a little bit on that left shoulder. And he's flexing his left hand yeah. a little bit, almost like he's lost a, a little stinger. feeling on it. Yeah, maybe a stinger. He's an old football player. Great move. Stevens left it long. Not the best half right now for Isaiah Stevens. And a foul called on Roddy. That was a frustration foul. Yeah. You got to be smart with that. Cannot afford him going out of the game. It's just his first. This pressure full court, I know it's only a little bit, but it does really make Maldonado focus a lot in the backcourt. I mean, he's, he's not walking it up, he's got to push it up, and he's got a side saddle. Right now, more back and forth. Takes a lot of energy. And it's stripped to the floor. Who wants it? And they've got Maldonado for a foul. And that is on the floor in a scramble with his third foul less than two minutes into the half. And Coach Linder was going to take him out. He was putting Reynolds in the game. Reynolds was at the scores table, and Maldonado looked over at him and basically saying, praying to him, hey, please, please, did you see Maldonado grabbing the left wrist? Of Moore. Moore well, has done a very good job on defense. Well, two of the fouls from Maldonado have been off of turnovers where he's trying to get the ball back both times. Retaliation fouls. Stevens got free. Laid it in. There's a mismatch there. You know, EK's a shot blocker. He's strong inside, but he's not as quick as Stevens. Stevens was able to take him right to the hoop. Colorado State's second leading scorer has six. Lead is back to four. And a foul on the defensive end. It is on Deshaun Thomas. That is his second. You'll see right here, a little hesitation move by Stevens. and just blows by EK. Well, and remember, EK is playing with two fouls as well. He picked up his second foul right at the end of the first half. And that half. was a smart move. Let him go to the basket. You do not want to challenge that. Jeffries had a nice first half and continues it here in the second half. He has hit four triples in the ball game. Right on an out-of-bounds play. That's one of those plays where you got to find the shooters. You take away the inside, but you got to make sure you match up with a guy like Jeffries. Four of eight from deep. Tanjay with the answer. Jeffries. Maldonado playing with three fouls. Wenzel sent to the floor. Maldonado gets it back. Takes his first three. Whoa. Well, you asked if there would be any rust from not playing a lot in the first half. That certainly looked like it. And, and he was open. As you look at Jeffries, Stevens gets over there a little bit late. Jeffries just raises up. He does not need much time or space to get that shot off best shooters in the country, not just in the Mountain West. Well, if you're looking to have the bench, Ducell had a great first half for Wyoming, but he had three fouls in the first half. 
Stevens on the drive, double clutch. And that was a great job by Maldonado not to pick up his fourth foul. And you know what? We haven't seen the last of Maldonado. I mean, he has struggled early on, but this kid has been consistent for this whole season. But he's make he's got to make the right play, the right pass. He's a guy that's got to feed EK in that two-man game. Whips it over. Jeffries again. Roddy has his seventh board as he approaches what would be a sixth double-double on the year. Four minutes gone by. Moore crossover for three. Second <laughs> chance for Roddy. We talked about adjectives. Fearless. He is definitely fearless. And he went straight to that board. It, nobody was going to stop him on that play. E.K. thought Wenzel was going right. He went left. He threw it out of bounds. And that is his fourth turnover of the ball game. David Roddy gets buckets. And he's got the Rams. He's ready to go. Look at that game face. <laughs> Doesn't that look like a quarterback going to a state title? <laughs> I mean, the student section is filled on both sides to the rafters. The crowd up the sidelines filled to the corners. It's you could not buy a ticket to this ball game. Literally, I could not buy a ticket. No, you tried. <laughs> tried. All right, right, back to Roddy. By the way, you knew you were getting in for free to call this game, right? Why were uh, you buying tickets? Well, my brother lives in Denver, so I get my little nieces and nephews to a game. Yeah, and a good one. A really good, good environment. One. Into the corner. It's an open look for three. Huge. And Odin knocks one down. He, he played really well in the first meeting, and that's his first bucket of the game. They needed that from him. Jeremiah Odin has scored more than four just once in the last five games. They got Moore's trailing. Roddy and EK, and it's the bigger man who rips it away. And that was good. Roddy didn't get called for the foul. EK is complaining about it, but, you know, we'll see as this game winds down in the latter part of it if they're going to slow down those whistles. Into the paint. Reynolds thought he got fouled. Poked it away. It's back to the Rams. Well, now, he had a big shot in the first half, too, when he first stepped in for Maldonado. When you talk to the officials before the game, you, you sort of give an, gave an edict. John Higgins got all over him, talking about how long the last game you did with him. Well, no, so John Higgins was in Austin to do Texas and Texas Tech on Saturday, a game that lasted well over two and a half hours, much like the game in front of us between Providence <laughs> and Xavier, which is still going on. Chandler Jacobs thought about it, now pulls, and hits! <laughs> Jacobs with a pair of triples here on the night. He's got eight in the lead, back to three. Look how far EK is away. And the double team is just taking him out of the game. Every time he touches the ball, Jeffries on a curl. That one too strong. Stevens with a three on one. Fed it for Rivera. And an offensive foul called. And Medved can't believe it. Good pass by Stevens. You know what? Reynolds was there. I didn't think he was there when I saw it live but he is right there and he is stationary and and medved's gonna get a, a technical foul wow he is livid So an opportunity which looked like Colorado State could push this to a six-point game instead has Jeffries on the other side shooting one more free throw. That was a tough call right there. I mean, obviously, Coach Ben Ben thought it could go either way. It was unfortunate because there's a beautiful pass from Stevens to Rivera. But you thought the right call was made. I, I did. It looked like... 
you know, he was, he was sitting right there without moving. It looked a little awkward. I, my first take when I watched it, I thought it was a block. So Jeffries hit them both. By the way, Wyoming takes a ton of free throws. Those were their first two of the night. Yeah, they have 402 on the year. Makes. Makes. It's unbelievable. Reynolds can't finish. Jacobs is playing a great game off the bench. <laughs> you know who's been playing really good defensively? He's been Morris. Been quiet offensively. He's not doing much, but defensively, he is keeping EK in check. Back to Roddy. Tries again. And hits again. David Roddy. Four triples. Timeout, Wyoming. As these years go on, and they had every right to be mad, but you thought that Marquise Pettigrew had the call right on the floor. I thought it was, but, you know, that's why I sit over here. I'm not an official. But, you know, I really believe in this rivalry game, let the players, you know, make the decisions. Let the players figure out what they're going to do to win a game. Jacobs, remember, Maldonado has three fouls. And Jacobs got to the basket. He's in double figures. Another turnover for Wyoming, leading to buckets. Speaking of buckets, Jeffries got 17. Drake Jeffries, the senior from Illinois, who's really been struggling in the last six games. He had made six triples in the last six games. Tonight, he's got five alone. And he's kept him in the game with those threes. Now they're really going at Maldonado. They know he's playing with those three fouls. Back out to Jacobs. Four on the shot clock. It's Jeffries. Off to the races! Well, there aren't nearly as many Wyoming fans inside Moby Arena, but my oh my, the ones that are here are loud. It was a lazy pass and good anticipation by Jeffries in the lane. That is a chant for defense. And that is a foul. Called on Reynolds, his second, which will send us to a timeout. What a ball game. Everything on the line. Rivals going at it. And it's a one-point lead. Yeah, I'll tell you, Wyoming getting great production from Drake Jeffries, knocking down the three ball, and then playing really good defense, which led to a flush. You know, as soon as the Rams look like they're pulling away, they're only up by one. Well, you said it correctly. Where would Wyoming be tonight without Drake Jeffries? Right, the senior from Mattoon, Illinois, site of Eastern Illinois University, who really, again, he's been a good player for this team, started his career at Indian Hills Community College last year, seven points a game. But this season, you're talking about a 43% three-point shooter, but the last couple of weeks has not been able to get it going. But if they get him going, and you get your normal EK and Maldonado production, Watch out as this team moves forward. Well, and the other thing is, is that Jeffries is a good rebounder. The last four games, he averaged 10 rebounds. In this game, he's got 19.6 rebounds. And hear this, three steals. So his defense has been really outstanding here this evening, too. Now, six rebounds here tonight, six of 12 from the floor. 11 of those 12 shots have come from beyond the arc. And I don't think we expected anything different. I mean, let me rephrase that. You do not expect the leading scoring duo in all of college basketball to have four points combined with 11-19 to go in the ball game. And you do not expect their team, if they do that, to be in the ball game. But you expected this to be a back and forth affair. Well, let's just put it this way. Those two guys, EK and Maldonado, score 52% of the points for Wyoming. And here they are down by one with four points. I mean, put that in perspective. I mean, yeah. that's ridiculous. Yeah. Well, it's a Wyoming team, 22 and four on the year. Their first loss when they went on the road to Arizona after a tremendous start to the season. They've got eight 
quad one and quad two wins. But this is a team that's trying to get to the tournament for the first time in seven years. Jerry Palm in his latest bracket on CBSSports.com has the Cowboys in as a seven seed. And Jerry has four teams as we speak in the NCAA tournament with San Diego State being the lowest of those four as a 10 seed. And they didn't hurt themselves last night, losing to Boise State at Boise State in that close game. Uh, I think all four of those teams are in. What a game Chandler Jacobs is having. The grad transfer has 12 points off the bench. He had 16 couple games ago against Boise State when Colorado State beat the Broncos. Maldonado has not scored in this ballgame. 19 a game on the season. Tough shot for Wenzel, can't get it to fall. It's a line drive, he's got to get a little arch on that when he's running in the lane on those floaters. Colorado State has made its last four shots. Jacobs trying again. And just like that, it's back to a six-point advantage. 15 points for Jacobs. We talked about how important the role players are in this game. And they're lighting it up. You haven't seen Ducell here in the second half for Wyoming. They might want to get him in the game a little bit. Foul called underneath the basket. And it is on James Moore. That is his second. Got to give Stevens credit on that dribble drive. Gets in the lane, draws attention, and then kicks it back to Chandler Jacobs for the three ball. Well, and you know who else we haven't heard from here? We talked about Jeffries helping this team. Remember, it was Xavier Ducell who got things going for Wyoming with 11 in the first half, but he's been sitting on the bench this entire second half, and Hunter Maldonado has his first points of the night. First time he's been able to back down and use that little baby hook. That's his staple. He usually gets 24 touches, 24 to 30 touches in the paint every game. Moore's roll to the basket. He's got six, the lead is six. Another role player making a good move. He alleviated the, the block from EK by going to the other side of the basket. A double again on Maldonado. Ooh, Rivera thought he got it off of the all-conference point guard. And here comes Xavier Ducell into the ballgame. So the important thing, as you see the pass here, watch how Morris goes to the other side of the basket. Uses the rim as, as a defender. Ducell double figures for the first time this year in conference play. Roddy going to get a little bit of a rest. The under eight timeout coming up in 121, so you expect him to come out after that. And it's kicked, so it'll stay Wyoming basketball. It's so important right now when Ducell gets in the game that he doesn't try to pick up where he left off. Let it come out of the flow. Don't take shots just because you were hot in that first half. Let the game come to you. Rivera picked it off. Maldonado called for the blocking. That is his fourth foul. And Steve, really, that wasn't his fault. He had no idea that Rivera was coming at him. Didn't have to give him a shot, a chance to come down. It was just a bad pass. Another turnover by Wyoming in the first game. They had 17 turnovers, and they still were able to win that game. But right now, they are struggling taking care of the basketball with nine turnovers. And Maldonado is staying on the you have floor to keep with him four in. fouls. You have to keep him in. He's a senior. He's a smart player. He's your leader of your team. You got to keep him in. Stevens got a good look. Wenzel off to the races with the rebound, and he'll slow it down for Maldonado. It was a little two-man game with Maldonado and Ike. They have not done that much. They're going to get a foul now on Jacobs, it looks like. And he was tripped on his way to the bucket. And it was called on Jacobs. That is the sixth foul on Colorado State. You see... Maldonado back in and Jacobs. It looked like Tonji was a guy that tripped him on that though. Another turnover. It's a big possession right now to break out of that six point lead. That's his most they've had in this game. Well, wow, since early in the first half. Yep. It started as a 12 point lead. Rivera 
And Ducell chases it down. Remember, every time Roddy's gone to the bench, the offense is taking a back seat. Can Wyoming take advantage before they get to the under eight media timeout? I think it's a good time to give him a break, though. Just a couple, a minute or two to get his legs for the last eight minutes of the game. And those are all shots that EK normally makes. He does not miss those shots around the bucket. Tonight, he's two of ten. They're throwing everybody at him. So they're, they're really trying to take Maldonado and EK out, and they're going to live with the other guys beating them. Roddy's set to check in at the next whistle. Jacobs into the corner, and he wants it back. Why not? He's been hot tonight here in the second half. Steps back. That's a three. And EK pulls down his 10th board of the night. They got to get something going here right now. They played good defense the last two possessions, but they haven't been able to capitalize on the offensive end. The dump down. Great play. Deshaun Thomas would not let him get the ball. Went up. EK knocked it out. Three straight empty possessions for Wyoming. You stop Colorado State at one end, you got to make up ground on the offensive end. The double on Maldonado. They got it out of his hands again, and Rivera is called for the foul. And that is the seventh on the Rams, which will send Wyoming to the free throw line when we... He's playing with four fouls. And Honor Maldonado picked up that fourth foul with about nine and a half minutes to go in this ball game. But second-year head coach Jeff Linder has left him in the game with his team now down by four here inside Moby Arena. I think if you're going to have a chance to win this game, you need your senior leadership, and that's why he's still in the game. He's uh, counting on Maldonado to stay out of foul trouble or get that fifth foul. Stevens threw it to nobody. EK has the turnover. Colorado State led this game early by 12. Wyoming had just five points in the early going of this ball game. Has been able to bounce back. Maldonado threw it up. Could not. Roddy with another rebound. Stevens got to sell in the air. Well, usually EK's back under there protecting the basket, but EK with three fouls is staying away. Stevens took it right to the hoop. Maldonado back and down. The double has come all night long. Ducell with the ball. Had 11 points in the first half. His first conference game in double figures. EK cannot buy a bucket. He is 2 of 11 tonight. Every time he gets the ball, he's looking for that double team. The Rams have done an excellent job on the defensive end on the big two for Wyoming. No. Maldonado knocked out of his hands, and Ducell has it. So who's done the scoring for Wyoming with EK and Maldonado combining for six? It has been Drake Jeffries with the ball in his hands and 19 points tonight. See, I like this, this set up here because they can't double EK with the way the Jeffrey shoots. They did, and he found a cutting Maldonado. That's the easiest bucket Wyoming has had all night. And that is the big guy, EK, that found him. He was going back out to Jeffries for that three, and he saw Maldonado cutting wide open. Colorado State, one of its last seven. Roddy with 22, gets the foul, gets the roll, does not get it to fall, and he will go to the line for a pair. Roddy has been outstanding, and he is time now for Worth a Watch, brought to you by... Probably right now with this game, taking a, a step up in the Player of the Year category as far as the Mountain West. Well, he's got a double-double with 22 points, now 23 and 10 rebounds. Roddy with his sixth double of the year. And again, you come into this ball game in the final 10 days of the regular season as Colorado State takes a timeout. And you're thinking about player of the year. He's certainly up there, and he's making that case tonight. Timeout. We'll step aside.
You're watching March to March, presented by Principal Financial Group, along with the great Steve Wolf, Jason Horowitz. Happy to have you with us inside a sold-out Moby Arena. Roddy's got one more free throw coming, 23 and 10. And this is coming off of one of his worst games of the year. He had 11 points and only two rebounds for Nico Medved in their loss to UNLV in Vegas over the weekend. Legs weren't there. He just wasn't quite good. Their second loss of the season to Vegas, but he's at a different renewed energy tonight. And, and they're also, Nico Medved's taking him out, giving him spot breathers. The first time he took, set him out for a little bit longer, this last time, he was only out for about a minute. Get his breath, get back in the game. He is motivated, and he wants this win. Colorado State has to have a win to keep hopes alive for a Mountain West Conference regular season title. Back to Jeffries, one more time to Maldonado. Great swing pass to an open Ducell for three. E.K., the putback. He hasn't been able to hit all night, but the timely shot was big. He was really creative in getting in front of Moores, was able to box Moores out on the offensive end and get an easy stick back. Look for Roddy to get a touch here. They got to get the ball to him, and they're going to, I think they're going to get Ducell on they that on hold. And that is his fourth. So Xavier Ducell now has four. Hunter Maldonado has four. And EK playing with three. Well, and a lot of the times, the fouls that they've made are ticky-tack. Grabbing the arm, grabbing the leg. Once you have a turnover, it's not very good fouls. Roddy's been great from beyond the arc. Can't find it there. He had hit four of his first five from three. Good extension on EK coming over there. You see that big guy with the big hands coming out and he altered Roddy's shot. Jeffries from deep. Jeffries with 22, six made threes. It's a one point game. His shot was in the line of my sight right here and it was dead. I'd right in the basket as soon as it left his hand. He has picked a whale of a night to have his best game in conference of his career. Tanjay trying. Jeffries with the block. Wyoming the opportunity to go in front. The Cowboys have been playing catch up all night. They have led in this game for all of one minute and eight seconds. Jeffries for the lead. Roddy with the rebound and setting up the fast break. With 252, you probably want to run a little bit of offense. Keep it out of the middle where EK is. Well, remember, he's backing down Maldonado with four fouls. And what a crafty move over his shoulder to go back up three. He went right at EK and then switched and went the other way to his right hand and used the glass. The bounce to EK right at the bucket. Jeff Linder wanted a foul. Instead, it's Colorado State ball. From, day, from the beginning of this game, they have doubled. Colorado State has doubled EK and Maldonado. And there's still remnants of that. EK rushed that shot. That was a shot he usually makes. In the last four games, he's shooting 60% from the field. Back to Jacobs. Whale of a second half. And it continues. 18 for Chandler Jacobs. Timeout, Wyoming. And for those of you watching on CBSSports.com. But Chandler Jacobs coming off the bench. Ducell coming in for the Cowboys. I mean, it has been a lot of the guys, the reserves, the guys coming off the bench that have picked it up for both teams. Maldonado found Jeffries to EK. Plenty of time to shoot. The double comes again. He steps through it, and there's a foul called on the floor. And they are in the bonus, so a one-and-one one coming up for Graham E.K. They're throwing two people at E.K. every time he touches the ball. And so when he gets a point-blank look at the basket, he's looking for that double team. Well, we just finished a Providence win over Xavier, one of the teams that is best in the country at winning close games. Wyoming is in the same category. Cowboys have won six games this year by two points.
And he gets the bonus. Coming up next, be sure to join our crew in studio for all the action from around college basketball. It is inside college basketball right here on CBS Sports Network. Adam Zucker and the gang will have you covered, including that triple overtime game earlier tonight on CBS Sports Network between Xavier and Providence. EK hits them both. EK and Maldonado have 12 points combined. They average over 40 points combined on the year, 52% of the offense. Well, and Wyoming shoots 21 free throws a game. Tonight, just six. Jacobs, career high, 18 points for Colorado State to go with the 26 for Ronnie. Down to eight on the shot clock. The potential conference player of the year for three. Tapped around, rebound Colorado State. What a play by Tanji coming in there and tipping it out. Inside of a minute to go here in Fort Collins. Six on the shot clock. Stevens on the drive over Ducell. There's a lot of time right now. You don't have to get a three. It's a two-possession game. Jeffries around a curl. He's in trouble. He finds EK. Still 35 to play. Taking a lot of time on the clock here. Deep triple. Maybe not the shot you're looking for. And you got a foul. Shot clock turned off. You can't have Maldonado foul. He's fouled out of the game. He had a foul, though. EK only has three fouls. It would have been better for him to foul. But Maldonado knew that the clock was running down. Well, and the worst part, too, is fouls to give. So that doesn't even send them to the line, but Hunter Maldonado is fouled out of this game. But look how long it took for them to foul. They should have fouled as soon as that shot from Jeffries missed. you got to know the score in the clock. Get in the paint and score and really upset the apple cart of Wyoming's defense. Colorado State to inbounds. One timeout remaining. They get it into the backcourt to Stevens. Ducell has four fouls. They've got to get someone else to foul. They don't. And now Xavier Ducell is fouled out of this ballgame. Steve, I'm not sure I understand the part. I, I get the fact that you want to have your guards on theirs. But if you know out of a timeout that you have to foul and Maldonado has already fouled out, why put your second leading scorer tonight? Back there to pile out of the game. I have no answers, and it's a two-possession game, so you know you got to get the ball back at least twice. He had a great first half. All 11 points in the first half, and they were down 19-7, nine minutes into this ball game. He's the one who got them back into the game. But he is fouled out, and he and Maldonado will be on the bench if they can force overtime. Stevens at the line for a one-and-one. Colorado State has not missed tonight. So Wyoming has one timeout. Colorado State has one timeout. It's going to be important for the Cowboys, make or miss, to get that ball out quick. They cannot play around with it. they got to get a shot. It may not be a perfect shot, but they got to get down and get it to the basket. It's still going to be a two-possession game. Hands them both. Noah Reynolds into the front court. And Wyoming takes its final timeout with 16.2 remaining. Cowboys, last ditch effort on the road when we come back. Now two of the three teams chasing the conference title. Colorado State has not won a conference title in 32 years when they were a member of the WAC, like Fresno State's last title. Wyoming in the last 20 years. And the Rams had to have this game tonight to pull back into the race. Remember, right now, everybody chasing Boise State. And 
not even numbers of games down the stretch, but Colorado State had to have this one tonight. And Steve Wolf, they are 16 seconds away from pulling that off. Yeah, and it's, it is important to know that Colorado State has a chance to play Boise State to really, you know, put this in their own hands. It's going to be at Boise State, which will be a tougher game, but... But the Colorado State game against Boise State, the last day of the regular season. We'll see what that means here on CBS Sports Network. The inbounds pass, nowhere near the receiver. Roddy's got the grab. And Wyoming gives the foul. Seven seconds coming off the clock. And that'll send Roddy to the free throw line. Well, Wyoming got close on multiple occasions. Got this game back in the, into grasp, but just never able to pull in front here in the second half. And, and Roddy from start to finish has been the story of this game. We can talk about Jacobs. I think he did a great job coming off the bench and real key. It's the front end, no timeouts left for Wyoming. They gotta get a bucket. Odin, the 40-footer, it's off the mark. EK the rebound, the clock is over, and Colorado State is still alive for a conference regular season title. What a game, what a crowd, two great coaches, and you're gonna see these teams both in the NCAA tournament. And for the second time this season, the more than 3,000 students in this building, they don't want their seats, they want the hardwood. This is what's great about college basketball. Sitting outside in minus three weather, waiting to get in, and then rushing the court when your team wins. The rivalry game, but also it moves them up in the standings. Chandler Jacobs, huge story tonight with a career high 18. More from four.